Okay, so still looking at Blender add-ons, and this one's called VSE, standing for Video Sequence Editor. VSE Transform Tool. And uh, actually, this this first link here, Blender Artists, is a forum where a lot of people are discussing a VSE Transform Tool. Instead, we're going to go to the second one on the list, this one, and we come across this. Um, it took me a few tries to work out how to actually download this in a format that worked, and I'm not entirely sure why. But what I've found that worked is if I click on this, and this opens the code up, and then I click on this raw option here, so we're looking purely at the code, I can then go file, save page as, and yeah, we're in the, uh, the uh, documents blender files add-on folder, and I can click save. And yes, I do want to replace it. So there's no real reason to do that. As you might guess, I do a bit of testing before these, and so I've uh, already uh, downloaded it once already. So now we get to load up Blender and wait for it to ping into life. And we do, as ever, go to the user preferences and add. And if you're not on it already, we click on add ons. Just going to full screen that and go to install from file. Going to drag that down a bit. And I've got these bookmarks. I'm uh, going to select the add ons bookmark. And this one is VSE Transform Tool and install from file. And chances are you can just click that tick box top right and then click save user settings and uh, close the Blender user preferences window. However, if you can't do that, but if I start to type its name in the box here, VSE Sequencer colon VSE Transform Tool. Cool, that's the one I've got. Another thing we could do is they're all in categories here. So rather than typing that in, I could go to the Sequencer, which is another name for the Video Sequence Editor or Sequencer. We get to see that these two ones are currently installed. And then I'll get to go to Save User Settings and shut this window to reveal Blender behind it. So now it's installed, let's load up our um, old edit file that we did in that video number four. And yeah, let's go back to a default. And let's have a look at what we can do with this new add-on. Uh, there's no new buttons here, unfortunately. But what we can do, if we let's, let's do it to this title that says the height of Abraham there. If we right click it and press T for transform, right, we immediately have, this is now greyed out and become hidden. And we've added this uh, transform effect to the strip above it here. Now this means if we now roll the mouse over this area, we could press G. And we're now able to grab the position of this image, just G, just like we did to uh, grab any of the strips and move them around the editor. We can now press G to grab what position this image is in and move it around. And like that, I could press X and have it only move along the X axis. Or I could press Y and have it only move up and down. And also, having positioned it, remember how I said Alt and the key is uh, under it, so we can press Alt G and have it return to the centre. We can also use R for rotate, and we can rotate it to whatever position we choose it to be in. So I could actually decide I wanted to straighten it up, and I could um, grab. Let's I'll grab it only in the Y direction and move it vertically down, so we now have that like that. And we can also use S for scale. So we can scale, we can zoom into it, or we can zoom out and have it appear much smaller. Uh, what else can we do? Oh yeah, we can uh, press S for scale and then X, and it will only scale along the X direction, which is at a pretty weird angle at the moment, because the thing is currently rotated. But um, Okay, so I could press Alt-R to unrotate it, 
and then if I press S and X again, we're now scaling just in the X direction, or S and then Y to scale it just in the Y direction. Yep. And then click to un to to actually have placed it. And we could always use Alt S to unscale, Alt G to ungrab, and Alt R. Oh, we have pressed Alt R to unrotate, so we can easily undo these. So uh, let's have let's try setting it up to uh, scale in. So let's have it start off quite small like that. Oh, and we can even press I to add a keyframe. So we can, uh, yeah, I is a strange button to add a keyframe with, but I is uh, add keyframe, and we can. Um, so we could. What well, we're actually doing scaling here. So we'll add a keyframe in scaling, and then we can go to the end of the. Oh, we could use cut previous and cut next to go to the end of the strip. Um, in fact, we have to still go to one, we need to still go to back back one frame. Um, there, there, now we can see it again, because the, uh, the cut next goes to the frame on which there is no more strip, rather than the last frame of which some of the strip exists. If you probably understood that, but the words I say don't make any sense, that's what I'm hoping anyway. And we can use S for scale, and we can scale, whoa, that's actually quite interesting. Scale again. Let's scale, yeah, let's actually scale crazy like, like that. And we can press I and set a keyframe for the scale. And now we'll, have, we'll see that it zooms in as we go forward. So uh, I, can, uh, if we, I can use up and down arrow keys to go to the previous, uh, to the previous and next keyframe. And so if I want to delete a keyframe, I can use Alt-I, again the Alt key meaning doing the reverse of that. Ah, doesn't seem to be doing that. Uh, we will actually see, that, however, if we go here, that the, uh, the scale is set on the X and Y values here, and we can use Alt-I to delete a keyframe there. And Alt I again, moving the mouse onto the relevant thing and using Alt I to delete the keyframe. And we can use cursor back and we can delete these again here. Okay, I think that gives you an idea of what can be done with this, which will make uh, scaling objects within the video sequence editor a lot easier and more efficient. So, there you go. See you soon.